والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين وحبيب إله العالمين العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد أب القاسم المصطفى محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد نثركم الله ببدر وأنتم أذلة فاتقوا الله لعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العلي العظيم Once again, respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tonight is night of 17th of Ramadan al-Mubarak. Another critical night in the history of Islam. Another crucial turning point in the history, in the early history of Islam. This night is so important that Quran speaks about it. And this day, which is tomorrow, is so crucial, so important that Quran repeatedly, not once, repeatedly speaks about it and reminds us even after passing the date of this particular day and also demands from us to learn some very crucial and important lessons from this particular event, incident in the early history of Islam. I am referring to, of course, Battle of Badr, which took place on 17th of Ramadan, second year after Hijra and of course uh, my approach is inshallah tonight to reply one or two questions in connection with Battle of Badr which is very much source of confusion and also excuse in hands of enemies to portray Islam, an early Islamic movement or movement of Islam in negative light. And also, of course, we'd like to, you know, have a glance, have a little understanding of some very, very important lessons, some very crucial 
fibers which are present in this particular incident and Quran also insists on those aspects of Badr and reminds us to remember those incidents. Okay, quickly, very uh, quick, I would like to, uh, you know, narrate for you the story of the Battle of Badr. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, established himself to Medina, first year passed, second year came and, uh, you know, the state of Medina or community of Islam is relatively stable and well established but continuously threatened from Mecca and those who are left behind in Mecca are always target of Kuffar and Quraysh and similarly they use all the means and all the canals and resources on their disposal to defeat Islam even if it is not even in their city. They don't allow anyone in Mecca to accept Islam or to migrate toward Medina and so on and so on. Uh, so a cold war is going on behind the scenes and that is a really a serious concern for the future of this newly established state of Islam in Medina. In this regard, the way most of the writers of history or historians have recorded is like that, that Prophet came to know that Abu Sufyan is coming from Syria with a very huge caravan of business with a lot of assets and money and so on. And of course, he is going to pass nearby Medina. And Prophet ﷺ decided to attack on this caravan, this trade caravan, and take over their belongings and assets because they will be used for fight against Islam while they have taken our money, our assets and do not allow anybody who wants to come to Islam in Mecca and they are under terrible pressure of the same Quraysh. And therefore as a strategy Prophet ﷺ decided to go and capture this particular business, you know, uh, caravan or trade caravan. Prophet ﷺ gathered his companions and moved from Medina toward that direction where this caravan was moving or was expected to go through. Somehow, always, you know, spies and people with nifaq in every society exist. They somehow informed Abu Sufyan that this is the plan of Prophet of Islam and they are coming to rob you, they are coming to you know attack you or something like that. As soon as he realized or he got this news, he sent from a, he changed first of all his uh, direction and his route and decided to go a very bad route or route which is in fact in the direction of opposite, opposite to Mecca. And at the same time, he sent a quick messenger to Mecca and called them for help. And the situation is very serious and critical. The messenger arrived in Mecca and created a big scene there. I'm not going in those details. A lot of drama took place there. But then they could manage to besiege, you know, almost or uh, recruit almost thousand people. Among them, almost all the leaders an elite of Mecca uh, with 700 camels and over 100, you know, horses and weapons under the commandship of Abu Jahl. Prophet wasallam also with a small number of people, 313 uh, of his companions and supporters, 
reached to an area called Badr. When they reached to Badr, they got the news that a army from Makkah and Quraysh is coming and he consulted with the companions who came with him that what he would like to do to face this army which is coming from Makkah or to go behind the same business or trade caravan by Abu Sufyan which one you will prefer to do some people say we didn't come out for war we came out to get the this business and trade um, goods and so on out of Abu Sufyan we didn't come out prepared and ready and their number is also too much and therefore it will be better that we forget about that army and rather concentrate on this trade caravan others says no no we will go for the war against this army of Quraysh and Almighty Allah has promised us that he will give us or grant us victory anyway Prophet ﷺ preferred and decided the opinion of going to war with army of Quraysh anyway after a while you know at the battle at the battlefield of Badr battle took place great bravery of people like Hamza the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, Ali ibn Abi Talib والسلام, and some other great warriors of Islam uh, with a lot of details of course finally concluded with 70 people killed you know from Quraysh including Abu Jahl the leader and 70 of them were made prisoners and in this way this war concluded in victory of Islam with a, such a, a small number against such a big number of the people now so this is the very summarized version of uh, uh, battle of Badr which took place on the 17th of Ramadan second year after Hijrah We need to really, as I said, I promise that we would like to understand how Quran approaches and presents this particular battle. First of all, let me tell you that battle of Badr is the first battle of Islam. First battle of Islam. And Quran has not referred to any battle more than battle of Badr. It shows importance not only for the time of the people but even until today. In Surah Mubarak Al Imran, verse number 123 all the way till 128. In Surah Mubarak Anfal, from verse number 1 to verse number 19 and not only here again in other parts of Quran we find somehow some way uh, references given to battle of Badr and what happened in the battle of Badr. Now naturally our time does not allow to go through all these verses of Quran and I would like to just touch few important aspects. First of all, I would like to respond to that accusation which is done by enemies of Islam, mainly Orientalists have brought up that motive for this war was looting a trade caravan and trade goods of Abu Sufyan and Quraysh and therefore Prophet came out with this intention to get out of them such a huge amount of you know money and assets and material goods. If you look at the way 
I narrated this story and it is recorded in most of the books. It appears to be like that. But when we look at Quran itself and various verses of Quran, of course, which are much more reliable than the way uh, these narrations are recorded, we understand the story is different. Of course, our ulama, of a Syrian of Quran, defended even in the light of the same uh, narration which I or narrative which I have given you and trying to say that it was justified. It was a preemptive, you know, action by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and wanted to cut their, because their danger was a constant danger. It's not that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left Mecca and now people of Mecca and Quraysh of Mecca, now they were not worried about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Islam and they led them to live freely and easily and relaxed. It was not the case. There was not a single day when the Quraysh of Mecca were not thinking how to destroy Prophet Muhammad and his campaign and his movement and Islam and Muslims. There was not a single day when they did not torture the people in Mecca who were inclined toward Islam. Even these people who came out in the Badr, as I said, I did not get a time to explain to you but they were, big number of them were basically forced to come on the, for the battle of Badr. Some of them didn't want to come, but they were forced. So, so this was the scenario. And in this background, it was necessary to attack on the lifeline of these leaders of Quraysh, which was financial, which was economical. And they were depending on these type of trade between Syria and Mecca to be cut, to be disconnected and make them weak so they do not attack and worry with the Muslims and Islams. Islam which was newly established and newly starting to propagate and expand. Number of other justifications have been given. But my point humbly is this that in fact a lot of scholars also came to these conclusions that historians just narrate the series of incidents, uh, the way it took place, but they do not understand the connection between these two, between different incidents. Yes, Prophet came to know about a Quraysh uh, caravan and trade caravan coming under Abu Sufyan. Yes, Prophet Sallallahu did consult companions between two of them. But what was the motive of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Quran explains is something else. Quran very, very clearly says in Surah Mubarakai Anfal, Wa is Yaidukumullah Ahdatta Ifatain Annaha Lakum Watavaduna Anna Gaira Sauti Shokati Takunu Lakum Wa Yuri Dullah An Yuhikal Hakabi Kalimati Wa Yakta Adaw Biral Kafirin. And when Allah promised you victory over one of the two groups, two uh, ta'ifa, two groups, two companies, it is for you, annahalakum, wa ta'uddun, you were eager, you were eager. Now, who were eager? It is referring to a group of people who were not ready to go to war now. That's another very interesting aspect in Battle of Badr. Battle of Badr, as I said, is early, out of the first battle of Islam, very early days of Islam. And amazingly, Quran directly or indirectly says that even in that very early group of the people who were around Prophet Wasallam. There were people who have very strong Iman and there was a small minority who have weaker Iman or they were, you know, more inclined toward dunya, which normally, you know, it's a very problematic for most of the people and they do not want to hear about it and they want to take it as a complete, uh, you know, a situation where no exception, but all of them were 
hundred percent committed and hundred percent on the level of highest level of iman and so on. But what I'm saying, but the one which is without eye, 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 وَيُرِيدُ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُحِقَّ الْحَقَّ بِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَيَقْتَعُ دَوْبِرَ الْكَافِرِينَ No! Desire of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, in other words, from the very first time, it was just an excuse. The first issue was to cut دَوْبِرَ الْكَافِرِينَ To root out the faithless, the kuffar. And attack on them in a manner, in a preemptive way, that they should not again even think of attacking on Medina and putting pressure on the new Muslims in Mecca and creating regular problems through their spies and with the help of Jews of Medina and so on. This is very clear, and therefore, number of research scholars have given this opinion that no, the purpose of the Prophet wasallam was not trade goods which Abu Sufyan was carrying. The purpose of our Nabi and Prophet wasallam was preemptively to attack and cut the roots of kuffar and non-believers and stop them from interfering and inter weaning on a regular basis in the affairs of Medina and in for the future of Islam. So, so this is really very, very important point, uh, which Quran we can understand very clearly from these verses of Holy Quran. Anyway, as I mentioned to you in Surah Mubarakah Ali Imran, in Surah Mubarakah Anfal in detail, this particular battle has been discussed. Now, few points. As I said, it's a very long discussion, beautiful discussion, a lot of important lessons to be learned, but very important points I would like to draw your attention. Amazingly, as you know, that after battle of Badr, battle of Uhud took place, which unfortunately ended up in a very uh, sad situation, not in a, such a great situation, martyrdom of Hamza and so on and so on. Now, details you know. Somehow, sort of a defeat for Muslimin. Here, amazingly, in Surah Mubarakah Ali Imran, analyzing the situation of Ummah in or after Uhud, says, وَلَقَدْ نَسَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَزَلَّ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Very, very important lesson. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. Here in Uhud, you were in good numbers, much more well prepared and equipped, but you lost it. But Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped you at Badr wa antum azilla, and you were utterly weak. You were in a very weak position. Beware then of Allah. Have taqwa of Allah. Be conscious of Allah. You, perhaps you will be thankful. Very important reminder. Don't look at number. How many times a small number of people has taken over, has been victorious over Huge number of people. I think about it. You were Adilla in Badr, but Allah helped you. So that's why that same Allah did not help you here. Question. This is a thinking point. Allah's help is always there. Muslims are also there. Leadership of the Prophet وسلم, more than that you want is there in Badr and Uhud. Why Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not rescue them and help them 
in Uhud, but help them in Badr. Remember, Wattakullah Allah's taqwa. Surely it is referring that when you don't have taqwa, don't expect that Allah also will help you. When you are divided, Allah also will not help you. Very, very crucial message. Yes, even in battle of Badr, as I just now mentioned, at the earlier stages, before going to the battle, there were two opinions. There were people who were very much interested in trade goods, uh, without mentioning their names. But then there were people, majority of them, very committed, very, very much loyal to the Prophet And the rest also joined them after Prophet made a decision. All of them accepted Vilayat of the Nabi and Prophet When they were under the Vilayat of Nabi, Vilayat of Waliullah, then of course even with the smallest number, no, one third of Kuffar, without preparation, 313 in response to almost 1000, without equipment, without arms, without weapons. Quran says, but we help them. If you have taqwa, if you are united, if you are not seeking dunya, Allah will help you. And Allah helped you. Allahu Akbar. And then of course, you know, it goes in further detail. I don't want to now go in those details. Surah Mubarak Anfal, earlier verses of Surah Mubarak Anfal speak about, you know, ghanima or the booty or the, the, the things which you uh, take over after the um, our enemies are gone and it is called booty and it must be, you know, distributed among the people and of course there was some sort of a difference of opinion and Quran speaks about it. Again, very beautifully, in this middle of all this discussion about battles, about unity, about taqwa, about acceptance of vilayat of leadership and being together, about not loving dunya but being ready for jihad and offering your life for the sake of Allah and not being scared from death in all in this whole scenario, all of a sudden. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in between from verse number 2, 3, 4, you know, starts giving beautiful definition and attributes of believers. Innam al-mu'minuna alladheena idha dhukir Allah wajilat kulubahum wa idha tuli'at alayhim ayatuh zadathum imana wa ala rabbihim yatabakkiloon alladheena yuqimuna salat wa mimma razaqnaahum ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنين حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم. Okay, I do not want to take that discussion tonight here, but this is itself beautiful discussion. Five very crucial and key qualities of believers are discussed. In fact, one of the qualities is very connected to our discussion last night about health of heart. And disease of heart. Ida dukir Allah. Wajalat. Wajalat qulubahum. Allahu Akbar. But let us not go there. Then this surah goes further up. Which we have already discussed. Kama akhraja. Rabbuka min baytika bil haq. Wa inna fina fariqan minal mu'minun ila kahirun. Karehun. Again referring to the same group of people. Who are not ready for jihad, for sacrifice, for giving life and preferring dunya and so on. Yujadiluna kafil haq. They are the one who are arguing about haq and the debate. Very important lesson. Once uh, leadership consults you, you have full right to give your opinion. Nothing wrong with it. You can give your opinion. But after giving your opinion, and decision has been made. Now you still want to continue arguing and debating. Not accepted. This is what Quran says. 
this is what problem is of course in badr it was managed in hud it was unfortunately went out of the hand yujadiluna fil haq ba'da ma tabayyana ka annama yusaquna ila al maut wa hum yanzurun they disputed with you about the truth after that had become evident and clear for them as they were being driven to death with their eyes wide open allah akbar and then of course the same verse which i have explained to you comes which explains that the whole philosophy and reason for the battle of badr was not trade goods of quraish but it was preemptive strike on conspiracies and plans of quraish before they attack before they attack sometimes then it is nothing wrong in all uh, world and politics and everywhere between two groups and two countries and two nations who are in war between each other who are fighting with each other or enemies with each other sometimes preemptive strikes are necessary to protect a possible attack on them anyway as i explained to you then comes another very very extremely crucial and important issue in battle of badr which is again referred in quran repeatedly not once allah night is night of 17th of rabi ul 17th of ramadan and this night really reminds us of this particular verse number 9 of surah a mubarakah ye anfa where almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says let me recite for you is tastaghisun rabbakum fastajaba lakum anni mumiddukum bi alfin min al malaikati murdifin and when you appeal to your lord for help he answered you i will aid you with a thousand angels in a line in a file this verse and the verse after that is speaking about divine intervention very very important it was a night like tonight now prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has decided we are going to war we are going to jihad we are going to clash with quraish tomorrow with no preparation apparently with extremely small in number allah akbar 313 in competition in contrast to over 1000 well equipped people allah akbar you know in other words in the eyes of normal people winning this war was almost impossible almost impossible no way they can win this war and it is in this night when stress is there when tensions are there in the camp how we going to face in this very tense difficult situation you know they raise their hands for dua allah wa this is what quran reminds us that when all your material resources appear to be blocked to be stuck not working anymore and you come to allah is tastari iza tastari suna rabbakum and when you will is tastari suna rabbakum and when you will or you appealed to your lord in this night prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam along with his companions raised his hand wallah wallah help us help us in this battle we are so little in number amazing dua prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made brothers and sisters amazing amazing sentence he used he said ya allah if this small number of people killed tomorrow 
there will be no one left to worship you. Allah. No one will be left to worship you. You are the one who can help them. But because they have unity, because they have taqwa, because they have trust in Allah, Almighty says, you know, we came to help you. Natharullah, we badrin. Allah helped at the battle and said, angels, thousands of angels will come to support you tomorrow. You are worried about numbers, thousands of angels will be with you tomorrow in the battlefield. Then in the next verse, amazingly says, Wama jalahullah illa bushra lakum. But by the way, you know, this angels and all this will come and help you. This is just to you to be satisfied and happy. Otherwise, Wama nasro illa min in the law. Victory is from Allah. These means angels this way, that way. These are nothing. If Allah wants to do, can do it. Victory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the, I can see the time is almost past. The following verses also speak about different, you know, uh, divine interventions which came and which resulted in victory of Islam and defeat of enemies. And that was the day when Quran says, Mu'mineen were really happy, happy, pleased, farah. You know. Now, one or two important brothers and sisters lessons to learn here is that divine interventions, imdad ghaybi, divine help is a reality, is a fact. Almighty Subhanahu, you know, Almighty Subhanahu wa ta'ala has established this world and this universe, I have repeatedly said, based upon cause and effect, based upon system, uh, through natural cause and effect, things happen and took place. That's how Almighty Himself created this world and established. But it does not mean that there is no exception. It does not mean that there is no divine inter inter intervention and help. No! Divine intervention is a crucial component in any victory, in any success. Yes, this is what Battle of Badr is, you know, reminding us in all these verses, as I said, time did not allow. Immediately, even after mentioning uh, Malaika, which is itself a divine help, again says, even this Malaika are for you to be happy and satisfy your heart. Victory really belongs to Allah. Divine, divine intervention. How it comes? This divine intervention in different ways. Sometimes conditions for victory are provided exceptionally. Sometimes enemy becomes in big trouble, comes in big trouble unexpectedly. Sometimes malaika comes, sometimes rain comes. Sometimes in this, for example, Battle of Badr says the night before, of course, you were very stressed, frightened, wouldn't be able to sleep, but Almighty Allah made it possible for you to take a rest. And the rain which came, for example, it's all help of Allah. It's all divine interventions. So very important lesson that we are supposed to try whatever we can try through our normal means and efforts and energies. But remember, وَمَن نَصْرُ إِلَّا مَنْ إِنْدَ Final victory without help and support of Allah is not possible. So much so that things which appear to you as impossible, don't even think it is impossible. If you raise your hands for dua and you have taqwa and you have conditions which are ground for receiving divine help and divine intervention, it will come. I would like to take you now from here to the point when we speak about Imam Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, when we speak about that global revolution. We always say that this global revolution of Imam Mahdi, which will bring justice to the whole world, 
which will defeat all the oppressors, which will destroy all the system of kufr and shirk and will establish tawheed and justice on the whole earth. It will be through normal means, of course. It will not be through a miraculous way. But it does not mean that it will be without divine intervention. It will be without divine help and assistance. It will be indeed. Therefore, when you look at the situation in the world and you think, how in this complicated world it is possible, it is possible for one person to come and lead a revolution and change the whole order and defeat and destroy all these extremely deep-rooted, well-established, evil, oppressive systems on this earth. Oh, it is possible. Of course, with a struggle of imam and readiness of his followers. But of course, and indeed, it is only possible with divine intervention and imdad ghaibi. Help from unseen, of course, is a very, very important phenomenon. This phenomena, this element is not present, of course, in materialistic uh, world view. You know, they, they, don't, they don't look at this element. I don't know, after Corona, probably they will be compelled to. They can see now that with all their technology, with all their power and system and everything, how they are surrendered helpless before this smallest virus and enemy which they cannot even see you know somebody was calculated calculating that all the coronavirus which is around across the world which has now infected more than four million people by today and killed i don't know how many hundreds of thousand people across the world if you put them all together the total weight probably will not be even five grams if Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with five gram of his creation can bring this whole world and globe to its knees, you can understand how it is possible through leadership of his wali, Imam Mahdi salamullahi alayhi wa ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif, it is possible to defeat all the systems of injustice and oppression and establish justice and tawheed on the whole earth and globe. Divine intervention is a reality. Of course, that example of Imam Mahdi, alayhi, which I gave, is the peak, is the climax. But even in our day-to-day -day life, we cannot ignore this very important reality, you know, that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescue us, helps us, divine interventions do happen in various situations and conditions. Of course, and indeed, taqwa is important. Only, of course, divine intervention comes like in the case of Battle of Badr when the people were ready for jihad. They were not indulged in love of dunya so much that they were scared to die or they were scared to give their life. No, they were committed to give anything for the sake of Allah. In this spirit, with this vision, with this, you know, status of Iman, even a small number of people can defeat huge number of people with divine intervention and help and support. There's a plenty really to talk and speak about battle of Padr and lessons we can learn from this battle. Inshallah, some other time. I would like to conclude on this point. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.